Look at this Samsung Galaxy Chromebook 2. It looks absolutely beautiful. It is a breathtaking device when you see how amazing that red color is. And when you realize that I don't have the red color in my hands, it's a little bit odd. A lot of people are reviewing the red Galaxy Chromebook because they love the color. They love that fiery, amazing red color. And then right here in my hands, I have the gray model because some of us just want to blend in. Some of us are just casual people. People. And whether you want the gray model, whether you want the red model, I'm here to let you know if the Galaxy Chromebook 2 is worth your hard-earned money. So let's get straight into the review and get it going. So this Galaxy Chromebook 2, it looks really, really nice, and you're going to notice it does have a very premium build, and it's a very premium device, but when you compare it to last year's Galaxy Chromebook, you're going to notice that the price is a lot smaller. In fact, they have one model that starts out at $550 that does come with an Intel Celeron processor, 4 gig of RAM, and when you see those specs and then you see only 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage, that might seem like a massive downgrade, and in a lot of ways, it is a big downgrade from the original Galaxy Chromebook. You just have to keep in mind your expectations. This is not a proper sequel in the sense of the fact that it's supposed to be better or it's supposed to somehow be carrying on the same legacy. This Chromebook is meant to fix a lot of the issues that the previous Galaxy Chromebook had, and it's meant to be a lot more affordable. So if we look at that $550 base model, no, four gigabytes of RAM is probably not enough for most people. An Intel Celeron processor is not very good. It's not very fast. Just remember that that model is mainly meant for entertainment purposes. So if you're not doing a ton of productivity, if you don't have 20 tabs of Chrome open or anything like that, that Intel Celeron will still be pretty speedy for you and four gig of RAM will be more than enough for someone who just wants to use it for entertainment or for Netflix because this device still has an amazing screen, and when you get an amazing screen at a price like that, it will be worth it for some people. But I'm reviewing the i3 model. Now this has a Tension i3 processor, 8 gig of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now this doesn't have a stylus, it doesn't have other things that the regular Galaxy Chromebook had. Just keep in mind that the original Galaxy Chromebook was almost unusable for most people. We're talking three hours of battery life for some people, even two. So the 4K screen that the regular Galaxy Chromebook had, it was a huge detriment to the device. It was really terrible because it drained the battery and the i5 processor caused massive overheating. So this Galaxy Chromebook looks to keep most of the premium features or quite a few of them, but still give you a cheap, affordable device. Now I do wanna mention that right here on this keyboard deck, there was a sticker and it did take me like 45 minutes to get that off. I really had to pry hardcore. Be very, very careful if you're trying to get it off. It is a absolutely dreadful experience. I know Chrome Unbox had similar issues. So yeah, that does really stink. Now you will notice again, the keyboard deck was made of plastic. Last year's keyboard deck was made of aluminum. That is a little bit of a downgrade. I really don't like that at all. But you are going to see they do have some vents here. They have some vents on the back as well for the fan. So they do have a fan in this year's model. Overheating is not really a big issue, and that's a really, really good thing. You do have a USB-C port here on this side with the power button, and on this side you have a USB-C port up and down in the volume, an SD card slot, and a headphone jack, and SD cards go really flush in there. They're very difficult to get in, they are difficult to get out as well, but once you get it in, it's gonna be nice and flush, which is really good if you wanna keep your SD card in your device. So overall, it has really great build quality. This hinge does have a little bit of wobble when you're typing on a surface that isn't really flat, but every two-in-one laptop would. So it's actually improved over last year's model. I do like that. And the other thing, the trackpad is really nice. There's not much to say. The trackpad works well. I normally don't have a lot of issues with trackpads, but you're also gonna notice this keyboard here. It's a beautiful keyboard. It's nice, but a lot of people had minor issues where they would maybe have an extra letter or two added on as they were typing. Now, a lot of those issues were addressed over time. So software updates came out. People like Robbie at Chrome Unboxed or Michael Fisher, they had minor issues with it, just a little bit. I also had a little bit of issues and they went all away once I updated the device 
and used it. So I wouldn't say you're gonna have issues with double inputs. I honestly just think that was a software thing. And I honestly think it's just getting used to this keyboard because this keyboard does have very shallow travel. After I used it for a few days, I started to appreciate the quiet keys. I started to appreciate how the keyboard felt as I was using it. So it's a good keyboard, but it is a little controversial because some people might not like it, some people might. So I'd say it's good. It's not the best I've ever used, but again, it does depend on the person. Now, when you heard that this screen was getting downgraded from an OLED screen, a 4K screen, maybe you would think that the screen isn't any good, but I've got to say the display on this Chromebook is phenomenal. I absolutely loved the display. Everything looked amazing. The color accuracy was fantastic. And I really wish more devices came with a QLED screen. And when you're looking at the competition out there, like the HP Chromebook 360 or the Lenovo Yoga Flex Chromebook, when you get that, Chromebook out there, the Flex 5, I should say. When you think about that Chromebook, it only gets about 250 nits of brightness. When you think of the HP Chromebook, it's 250 nits of brightness. So this getting 400 nits, it is very, very good. And only really the Acer Spin 713 really seems to compete with that. Another thing about Chromebooks you need to know if you're new to the Chromebook world, Chromebooks perform very well. And you don't need an i7 processor in a Chromebook. An i3 processor, in my opinion, will perform way better than even an i7 processor on Windows. And when I'm using this Chromebook, you're gonna find out, man, this Galaxy Chromebook 2 is very, very fast. So the i3 processor in this device is faster than the i7 that you're going to see in something like the Google Pixel Slate. So the performance is great on this as well. So the i3 processor, since it is a U-series processor, it performs very, very well. It's very quick. And Chrome OS, since it is such a simplistic operating system, it primarily operates out of Chrome. So if you don't know a lot about Chromebooks, again, Chrome OS is just meant to work with the web browser. So you can go to Netflix on the web, you can go to Disney Plus on the web, you can edit documents on the web, even Microsoft Office has a document editor for free that you could use with Microsoft Office Online. So there's so much you could do with the web. So this device is really meant for those people that want to be able to do all that stuff on the web and they want a more secure operating system. Maybe you want better battery life out of your operating system or maybe you want it to boot up like that. Chrome OS is great for all of those things. As long as you don't need Windows specific games or Windows specific programs, as long as you're not using Photoshop or things like that every single day. Now, there are alternatives for Chrome OS for video editing or for photo editing. In fact, with the performance on this, I was actually able to edit a full video, a YouTube video. And you might wonder about the performance when you think of eMMC storage. How long does it take to transfer files on this device? So when I transferred about 10 gigabytes of video footage, I transferred it from an SSD. I had an SSD plugged in through USB-C and it took me about four to five minutes to get that transferred. And I tried through the SD card slot. I got the same result. I used a UHS SD card. I'll have a link in the description if you wanted to see that. A very fast SD card and I got my footage off in about four to five minutes. So I wouldn't use this with eMMC storage if you're transferring files on it every single day because it might only take a minute or two if you use something like an NVMe SSD. You could find that on the Acer Spin 713. But if you just want a device that you're barely ever gonna transfer files onto, right? You're not really gonna transfer a lot onto it but you still want a device that's lightning fast, that works well, that will even work pretty darn good with Linux apps, this device is definitely gonna do it. It's very, very fast. It's got a gorgeous screen. So we really just need to stop comparing this device to the original Galaxy Chromebook. This is not the original Galaxy Chromebook. The original Galaxy Chromebook was very, very unusable in my opinion because it had overheating issues and the battery was so bad you have to plug it in. And when you plug in your device, it gets even hotter. So it's a vicious cycle with that Chromebook. I would not recommend buying it. And a lot of people are saying you should buy it over this. I would not recommend that. Your average user does not need all that firepower. And maybe you will and you could do that, but that could also affect the longevity of the device because you have so much heat going on in the laptop. And that's why we have this. 
This fixed so many issues with the original Galaxy Chromebook, and this has great battery life too. It's not the best of any Chromebook I've had, it's not the worst. So this Chromebook would get about anywhere between six and 10 hours in my testing, depending on what you do, depending on how high the brightness is. Of course, if you're doing crazy intensive stuff, you're going to kill the battery in like three or four hours if you're just video editing nonstop, or maybe you're gaming on it through the Google Play Store. That is something that you really don't wanna do, but this still gets very, very good battery life as long as you're using it correctly. Just keep in mind, this has a much higher knit screen than some other Chromebooks, so if you do turn up the brightness all the way, you may see worse battery life, of course, because of that. We still have to ask if you should buy this Chromebook and if those flaws are really worth looking over. The speakers are on the bottom here and they do get a little more muffled. So they're a little louder than last year's Galaxy Chromebook, but they still can get a little muffled. So there's that, you do have eMMC storage and for those of you who are transferring large data files constantly on your Chromebook, that could be a big issue. Also, you might want a 2K or a 4K screen. Just remember, this screen really hits the sweet spot at that 1080p QLED screen, but maybe you want something different. I understand there are some flaws with this Chromebook, and there are also better priced options out there, at least when we consider the retail price. So when we look at the Acer Spin 713, that device has an i5 processor. That device has NVMe storage. And the keyboard may have a little bit of better travel. It also has a little bit of a better resolution on the screen. And the screen gets about as bright as this, if not brighter. So considering that device retails for $70 cheaper, and it has gone on sale $100 even lower than that, of course, if you see that Acer Spin 713, for like $100 cheaper, you see for 530 bucks. That is a great deal. Now that device will be heavier than this device. This device does weigh under three pounds, so that's one thing it's gonna have over the Acer. And it's of course a Samsung Chromebook. It's got that beautiful red that you may want. You may really like this gray color. You may like how the build or the laptop looks and that may be important to you. So of course the Acer is going to win in a lot of these categories because it is a budget brand. If we're just looking at best bang for the buck, the Acer Spin 713 wins. Now the HP Chromebook 360, the 14C, that retails for 629 bucks. That has less storage than this that also has a way worse screen. And we have to remember that that Chromebook has gone on sale a lot. I've seen it as low as 400 bucks. I see it go on sale frequently to like 450. So when we look at this, I think we should expect that even the higher end model is going to go on sale eventually. It will go down, I'm sure, to 550 at some point or 600. It may even hit that $500 mark when you're looking at extra special prices like Black Friday and things like that. So at that price point, whether it's 550, even $600, this becomes much more palatable and it really becomes a excellent contender for Chromebooks. I know you may be wishing that this Chromebook would just have the i7 processor, a U series or an 11th gen processor or something like that. It is not that, but this still performs great. It has a phenomenal display. I personally like the typing experience, though some people may not. It also charges with USB-C on both sides. You can also fit an SD card flush here on the side, which is a big bonus. And it has a really good look, and it's also really lightweight. It doesn't have overheating issues. There's really not a lot of issues with this Chromebook. I think it's a very good Chromebook. There's also the new Chromebook Phone Hub, where you could turn on your hotspot on your phone directly from your Chromebook. So I could get my text messages, I could turn on my hotspot. So I don't even need like a cell phone plan or something on a Chromebook to get internet everywhere. I could just quickly use that phone hub and turn on my hotspot. So Chromebooks are amazing. And this Chromebook, it really fits all the basic needs of most Chromebook users. It's fast, it's got a gorgeous screen, it's an absolutely joy to use. It's got great ports on it, and even though it doesn't have USB-A, it does have two USB-C ports, and it's just a lightweight, comfortable device, no overheating, and it does have good battery life. So they fixed so many issues with the past Galaxy Chromebook. They made this device a better device for your average consumer. At $699, is the price a little high? Yes, but do you get a lot of premium features in this Chromebook? Yes, and if you love Chromebooks and you want a premium Chromebook, this is it. It is a great premium Chromebook. There are better deals out there around five, 
450 600 bucks you could get a lot of the firepower in this around four to five hundred dollars in chromebooks but when you consider the total package i think this is worth buying and i do think that more sales will come along the way and it will drop it under 600 bucks and when you see it at that point i think it will be even more worthy of recommending and i think more people will want to pick it up at that time Thanks for watching this video, I really appreciate it. Feel free to check the links in the description, right? You could see if there are sales going on. That's one way that you could check those out and see if there's anything going on because sales come and go all the time. I know Samsung always has great promos and they even give you a good educational discount. Sign up for student deals if you have a, even an old student email, sign up for those student deals and you could get a decent amount of money off this today. Have a great day and remember, stay safe.